Hey everybody, just got back from work. The flies are here, terrible. Black flies and mosquitoes are all over the place. Okay, we are getting set up for bees. The bee guy just called me, he's gonna be bringing ours. We uh, ordered some last year, uh, didn't have it in time, I guess, and so our bees are coming now. So we've got some boxes set up here. Uh, I don't know if this is right or wrong, or I don't know nothing about bees, but I do know when they first show up, you're supposed to have a little hole. That block of wood will flip over later on. And there's a, a big hole and a little hole. And so when they first get started, a little hole is important. Uh, other than that, I don't really know. We've got frames inside of there. He's coming. We'll try to videotape whatever it is he's doing. So these are our frames. Uh, it's a total learning curve. I don't know anything about it. I believe we're supposed to feed them. At the same time, there is flowers right here, so maybe that's sufficient. I don't know. We'll find out. He's here, I think. I hear him. Coming down the lane way, so we will figure it out and learn from him. Is this sufficient for right now, or do you need more than that? No, no, that's all right. They taste a little bit, uh, they might be, it, it won't make any real difference. But I know nothing not, about it. Okay, so you might want to taste a little more to the side heat. Okay. Just so they catch the morning sun. Okay. Yeah, so up through this gap here would be good, because they'll get the sun, and that, that cedar okay. tree will block them a little bit. And, it, and actually, if you bring them back to, that's oh, how I guess. It's about here, yeah, like that. Okay, and then they're okay beside each other? Don't oh, matter? yeah, that don't matter, no. Okay. Uh, sometimes what we do is we face one one way and the other one the other way, but uh, it doesn't matter. I have a, a yard with both of them facing the same way and kind of the circle. Right? Okay, they'll figure it out. Yeah, they will. What's that? Do you want some blood? Uh, I don't know. How bad are they going to be? I don't know. Hopefully not too bad. You look really interesting. Do I? <laughs> <laughs> All this before supper. Well, that's the, there's the screen thing. Oh, okay, bottom screen board. Okay. Is that important? Yeah. Uh, so, this pulls out. Yep. That's for the mites and stuff? The mites. So you can keep track. It doesn't really help the bees. Okay. From that standpoint. Unless, well, of course, if a mite does fall down through, then they they do what's called questing. So they stand up and wait for the bee to come by and then they hop on. Oh. So, uh, then they're down below so they don't get picked up as easy. So, it has an advantage there. Come winter time, though, uh, it, if it's open to the ground like it, it did, that's bad news. Right. Because it's cold. Right. Yeah. But so as it, long as I do this, it should be okay for winter. Be okay, I think. And I would, if you can, I slip a board or, or maybe even a, you know a little bit of that one inch styrofoam blue. Okay, under it. Under it. Yeah. And now so winter time, lift it up, stick that under, and yeah, and see how that works. And okay. most of mine are wooden. You can play with it and see how it works. Okay. That's okay. Okay. And we go with a small hole. Just for now, anyway, so that because uh, they've got to sort things out a bit, and it also protects them right. from anybody else that might raise them. But you should be okay, right? Like a wasp or something, they have easier time defending. That's right. But how many bees am I getting there now? Uh, actual count, I don't know for sure. Okay. Eric, but there's about uh, there's four frames. Three frames will have brood in them, and uh, the fourth frame is a resource frame, so it's got food. food. And does it matter which ones we use? Uh, okay, so. This is where the hole is, so we'll take these five out here. Okay. Are you going to work the bees? Maybe, eh? That one's interested in everything. Oh, that's good. That's good. Why are we taking those out? Because uh, he's bringing some with them in. Yep. Okay. That way, if you're working with the frame, you don't have to remove it. You can just lift it off, like lift the frame out with it on. Okay. Okay, and it doesn't get messed up and everything. The bees don't get hung up in it. So and you, you feed that year round? Uh, yeah. You can, but really it's just now and in the fall. Okay. And then a little bit in March. Once the flowers come out, they're, they're good on their own. And I only use it when we're moving bees a little bit because, uh, like I said, like they don't know where they are. So they've got to figure this all out. Okay. It's crazy that these bees won't end up in that hive. Well, they will. Oh, they will go back and forth a bit? Yeah, sometimes. But okay. uh, they have a different scent to this crew. Isn't that nuts? And then once they identify that, unless they loaded with pollen or loaded with uh, nectar, they might get killed. Okay. Or if they're sweet talking, they the might get in. Get out. Yeah.
they may explode right out of the box. Okay. Or they may just sit on the frames too. So you just got to be kind of aware of that. And you, you pulled these out of yours. Yep. And bring them over here. So you'll have a, there's a queen in here and there's a bunch of workers. A bunch of workers. There'll be nurse bees and uh, field bees. This is crazy. These are some of the, well, all creatures are interesting, but yeah. these are really fascinating. They are, they're a unique creature. No question. It's my wife's department. But... Oh, okay. Well, we do everything together as a family, but yeah, I'll be off in the fields here soon. Okay, so we're going to open them up now. Oh, he doesn't want to be in there, so I'll try not to get him in there as much as possible. Ooh, they're really jam-packed in there. Okay. So I put quite a few bees in for you. Okay, so that's going to give you a good colony to start with. So now we're just going to lift them out slow. This is the heavy frame, so it's got the honey on it. Okay. And the other ones don't? Uh, they have honey and uh, they'll have pollen. And we'll just take a look at this one. So you see on this one here, there's a cap brood. And then they got a little bit of honey packed in here. They're starting to move it in there. Cap brood? What yeah. Do you mean? So the, the when it starts, the queen lays an egg. Yep. Then it turns to the larva. And then it turns to pupa. And then it's cap. And so then it sits in the cap for a period. And then once they're matured and developed, they'll come out. They'll eat their way all the way out? Yep. They pop out of the out of the cell. Wow, so there's a lot of bees. Just, see, uh, there's one coming out now. See him right here in this corner here. Oh yeah, he's digging his way out of there. Yeah. And there's one there with some white on it. What's that? That's a pupa. Okay. So they're sealing that up. And if you look down in in there, you'll see the larva. Yep. The white larva there. Yeah, that's so, so you don't have plastic like these ones have this inside? Uh no, these are this was uh just like that frame with wax and wire framing. Okay. And you see, they build this out then, right? Okay, but you're missing some chunks. Okay, so they've taken that out. They eat this? Well, they move it around, as far as I can tell. Oh, this is actually like, what? this is it's plastic. Wax. No, it's wax. Yeah. Now, one of the issues with that is, and what you'll have to watch for when you check them, is that they can put a queen cell in here. Okay. Okay, and it looks like a peanut. And if they do that, and you don't catch it, and you don't want to lose the queen, then uh, you're, you're in trouble because uh, so you've got to check here and make sure if it's there remove it they only do it there not everywhere else oh it'll be anywhere oh okay. but uh, what yeah. it makes it harder for you to see when they do it up in here oh i got you yeah, so. okay. and if they do that and she hatches that's when they'll split usually she splits a little bit before they actually come out okay and that so the, but the old that, queen the old queen yeah oh she's the one that takes out not the new one well sometimes she'll stay but other times the She'll go. And if you don't have another hive for them to go in, then they're gone. Well, the, it's very, uh, if you can catch them when they're on the swarm thing, then uh, you could pull some frames out with queen cells and place them in there. You'll lose your feed be field bees because they'll all come back to this hive. But the uh, nurse bees generally stay and look after everybody. Okay. Not so. I'm going to be calling you with lots of questions, eh? <laughs> okay, so there's another fairly full frame. And I wasn't really watching for the queen. She was on this frame, I think, if I remember right. Now, I don't mark my queens. She's noticeably different, though? Oh, she is, yes. And she'll hide, eh? Do you watch the Star Wars movies? No, or I think Cups? I may have seen them once. Okay. Uh, did, you, did you ever watch Star Trek? Star Trek? No, no. I wasn't really into any of that kind oh, of okay. stuff. But... Well, there's a fellow on YouTube says that uh, the queens are actually Klingons because they can cloak and you can't see them. Okay. Yeah, it's just a thing from the, the show. They're just a little bit hard to see until you get the knack of kind of looking for them. And patience too, eh? What's that there? Let's see. Oh. There's a big chubby one. You'll see them once in a while. That's a drone, and they're they're, breeding, they're they're the males, okay. and their their cells will look like this. See how it pops straight out? Yeah. And it's a lot higher than these. These are worker bee cells, and this is a, a drone. And the rest of these are all like non-sex. They're just oh whatever. no, they're all females. 
Oh, they are all. Yep. But they're not breedable. Like, uh, well, you see, that's the thing that can happen. Is is that if the queen's not not present, and you don't put an egg in at a certain point, and they don't generate a, a new uh, queen, then at some point there'll be a worker or maybe several workers that will uh, begin to lay eggs, but they're not fertilized, so they all turn into drones. They so, will still hatch. Oh yes, but they're of no use. What's to what's all this? That's what's, honey. Well, even though they're not fertilized, they still hatch into a drone. Yeah, yeah. The, these fellows here aren't fertilized either. They're squishing it. Okay, you just move it there. There you see. Give a little poke. You can see that. Honey. That's there. all honey, and they said yeah. that's their food supply. Yep. Okay. So once they have this all filled up, that's when we put the top one on. Yeah. And then you got to put the queen extruder in between. Correct. Uh, if you want to use queen extruders, yes. It's up to you. Oh, you don't? Uh, sometimes, sometimes not. It just sort of depends on what you're doing. Uh, and queen excluders, uh, sometimes because of the volume of bees that get in the hive, they seem to cause uh, issues as far as swarming. Because you have a, a light, tight area. She's run out of an area to lay eggs and she can't move freely. Okay. And uh, then suddenly they, it triggers the swarming. But then what about for extracting honey? So that they have a frame to work on that'll be warm. It's easier for them to work it, I think, if it's warm. Okay. And they can generate the heat from both sides. And then and as they need the space and as the more bees show up, then they uh, they can build on it. If you rely on them to go to this frame on their own, sometimes they, they seem to stall and don't seem to want to jump onto it. Okay. Okay. So now I'll have to move them around too? Uh, as they develop, if this frame gets full, then you might move two over and move another one in. Does that make sense? Yep. You're just kind of trying to help them to give them the opportunity to build on it. The queen will want that space and they'll go to it. Right. If, if there's a bit of a honey flow on, it's amazing how fast they can build comb. And we should be coming into that type of time frame. So now... We'll... What, why, why do you put that right there? Nice. Okay, so if we put it crossways and I want to start pulling frames out, mm -hmm. then I, I hook it and, then it and it goes kind of soft and mushy. Mm -hmm. So then it gets all over the place, eh? If I put it here, then the bees can work it from both sides. And when I want to remove that frame, I don't have to touch it, eh? I can just lift the frame out and we're all set. That makes sense. A hole in it too, looks like. Yes, it does. It's an upper entrance. So we want to keep that place so right now, what I would do is turn it around. And uh, since they're new here, it, it, this there's different viewpoints on whether to run with the top open or the top closed or the or, and just the bottom or close the bottom and make them go to the top. Personally this time of year I generally uh, start to turn them so that there's no upper entrance and then they just come out the bottom. So like this? Yeah. Like a squishy but what about the bees that's in the cardboard box then? Oh we should shake them in. Shaking bees, that kind of sounds like a bad idea. Well, it works. They don't seem to mind, eh? No, they seem to adapt pretty good. The idea is not to, if you, if you try to brush them out of the box and stuff, you wind up kind of squishing more. Oh, yeah. Okay. And that doesn't squish that thing? No, it, it, it's, well, got a, it's got a bit of a lip here, too, eh? Yeah. That's called the bee space. It's three-eighths of an inch. And uh, if you have a, it's something that's smaller than three eighths, bees can't move through it very well. And if it's larger than three eighths, they'll fill it with comb and glue it together. Oh, and then you never get it apart. Then it's harder to get apart. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now we pop the lid. Well, actually, we'll take that empty super. And do you have a little bit of a? What you can do, uh, you don't have it here now, but a little square piece of uh, plywood, and just cover that hole. Okay. That stops them from climbing up into the other super since we're not really there yet and uh, it helps keep the hive warm and they can regulate the temperature more. Okay, and then you can still stick the empty box on it then? Then you can set the empty box on the top. Now, uh, after you do that though, you want to put a little piece of tape over the hole here and attach it to the box so that you don't get razors in it. Okay. It's not such a big issue now because there's no honey on those, on those uh, foundations, but as you move along, if you were moving stuff around and you put them up there with the uh, honey on it, they, uh, all the bees in the area get in there and clean it out. Until these guys are strong enough to defend. Yeah. But if, but it, if we just threw that lid really, on here, would that be good enough too? It works well, yeah. 
but then, it, I, it, then I wouldn't need the other box per se. You wouldn't need if you don't want to put it on. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just, just here when I got. I don't know if you want to carry it all the way back or not, kind of thing. The uh, idea is, is that no. you don't really want to get rain on them, like on the foundation. And if you've got the lid, you can just set the lid on top. Okay. Well, then we just, just need to find a chunk of plywood or something. Yeah. And tomorrow you can check them a little bit and just put a little block on top. A little quarter inch piece of plywood would be fine, or a sliver of the board or something okay. like that. You just want that whole block. For now, if you just stuck that lid right on top of here, or they will fall off the honeycomb? Uh, well, they will. They'll build their own comb in there. Once they get powerful, they'll start coming up. But then it becomes a mess, like you, how you get it out and stuff like that. So you're better to put the frames in. But this isn't the plan like for the long term. Once that box gets eight frames full of bees or so, then you want to put this box, remove your inner cover, put this box down, and then put your inner cover on top. On top of here and then that. Yeah, that so then they've got two boxes that they can move up and down through. And yeah. then that is the little uh, No, we'll close this whole off. We don't want them to get in there. Okay, so we should get a cover for there later then. For now, we'll just stick this in here to hide these. That works. And then you say we should take that whole shut. I, I would, yeah. Yep. And, and uh, maybe later you want to take this and put it store it somewhere until you're built out or whatever. But for now, that just stores them and yep. And you don't have any issues. And they're sealed up. And they're sealed up. Yeah. Pretty good. Okay. So we'll throw a lid on top. Yeah, Chase. Uh, where did the lid go? Oh, it's right there. Oh, okay, so these boxes will be yours, okay? And they come in kind of handy. If you're working with the frames and you're moving things around and you want to have a little look at a frame, or you find the frame with the queen on it, then you might want to set it in here so it's okay. out of the way, and then you can move quickly through the through the hive. So I should keep these around? Yeah. You make these or what? Uh, no, you order them and, uh, oh, yeah. they ship them and then you put them together. So now, just be careful. You we'll see if we can find slowly. the queen in there. Is she in there? Yeah. She could be. Now that's a honey frame. Okay. It's full of honey on this side. Yeah. yeah How do I tell queen. who's the queen? She's bigger. And she generally moves with a little bit of space around her. Yeah, I don't see no But then she there. can drift into the into the crowd too, right? Yeah. And that hole is there too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They always flap their wings or? Sometimes they put their wings up, sometimes they lock them together at the back. Do I put it like right tight to the side or? Uh, yeah. It, 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 in this case it's good to put it tight. Okay, now when you're doing the rest of them, you want to watch. Just be careful when you bring them close together. Because the queen could be standing on here and if you squash her then we're in trouble. It takes 16 days to raise a queen. And then... 16 days, sorry? Days, yeah. Well, that's not even that bad. No, but it'll take another 8 to 10 then for her to get mated. Okay, so let's have a look for the queen. Well, this one's a lot lighter. Yeah. It's cap root again. Okay, so just flip it over now. Hey, there's some more boys there. Uh, nope, they're not high enough. Oh. The boy cells will be big like this. And you'll see them sticking straight out. This one here. So like, like this here. bump right there? Yeah. Might be a boy? That'll be a boy. Okay. And they know how many of those they need and all that stuff? They do all their own thing there. We we don't uh, adjust that. Now, uh, when you get into mite control and everything, drone cells are a bit of an issue from the standpoint that they can hold more mites. And the mites seem to know that. Hmm. Yeah, don't... What are these ones doing? They're working, uh, I guess, there, is there larva in the cell? Or are they putting honey in there? That one died right there. Oh, well, that bugger's climbed in there pretty deep. Yeah. They like, go look first, at this eh? one. That died. Oh, he got squished. Okay. Put nothing in that one. Let's put that one in. As you move along, you might want to scrape that excess comb off there. If they start sticking everything together, it just makes it difficult to move the frames out sometimes. Yeah, you sense. get a, a frame puller, it's like a little clamp. I don't think so. We have a scraping tool and a brush. Okay. Yeah, that's the scraper right here, I guess, right? Or is that a puller yeah, on the bottom? Yep, yeah, that's a frame puller, so okay. you can lift the frame. And then the other side is a little scraper thing? Yeah. 
Okay, did you get her in there? Okay. What's all these little things in there? So you see some have emerged and that's left an empty hole. So they've started to put some honey in there. There's some boys uh, there? Could be a boy, yeah. It might be possible too. There's something in behind that's caused them to raise the cell up. You see these ones along the bottom are more likely to be boys. They're popped up, yeah. This one's opened one? Yeah, they're still but raising it. Our larvae in there. Yeah. In here? Yeah. You do school tours? <laughs> no, I don't. Hey, Dave, look, there's one right there. Dave Keynes and Nancy right Keynes. Nancy one? was a teacher. Is that a queen? Okay. Right there, it's nope. a big giant. It's, it's, let me see here if I can find a drone. Here you go. Right there. So drones don't have stingers, eh? This is a drone. See how he's bigger? He's not fully matured yet. He's just out, kind of. And they don't sting you? They can't sting. No, no stinger. So you can grab them and hold them? Yeah, you can. Well, you can do that with the worker bees, too, as long as you don't squeeze them. Just don't make them mad. Yeah. And so these ones, they have pointy on them? Okay, like a worker bee? Mm -hmm. If I get stung here, I'll be able to show you a stinger. There, can you see it sticking out? Mm -hmm. You see that little little needle coming out of there? Not real clear. Out of his bum. Yeah, coming to the back side there, yeah. Huh. Still no queen in there. No queen yet. Or eat out of we missed her and she's just it, hiding. That could be too. It's hard this time of night. Yeah, on a bright sunny day it's easier too. Okay, you got him there? Mm -hmm. Okay. So how do we know? Oh, did we, we want to stick one between again, Dave? Or? Uh, I've still got one frame to put in. Okay. So we'll slip after he puts that. Slide one, one over now. We're done that one. So you lose frames every time you sell nukes too. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Yeah. So let's put in a new frame. Okay. We'll pull this one over. See how they, they're kind of packed up on top of each other? They draw holes in there. Yeah. Yeah, how come they're packed up on top of each they, other? They keep each other warm. And also, too, with the shuffling and the shaking, they're kind of clinging, eh? So it's possible she's hiding underneath she this could pile. could very well be underneath, yeah. Oh, there, right there. there. Right there. Let's see? There's a big bugger in there. That's there. Yep. Good That's eye. Huh. Geez, you're a natural. Took your hood's awfully into it. <laughs> Wow, she's quite a bit bigger. Yes, yeah, she is. She's quite a bit larger. She's like trying to. She's hiding under them. That's yeah. crazy. They mess with people. I'm sure we don't. I'm glad we're not like this. Like <laughs> in Toronto, this is what they think. This it looks is more like. like Toronto. Yeah. Yeah. Big traffic jam. Everybody's in a hurry to go nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Cool. Okay. So I'll let you. Now this is the tricky frame, eh? You don't want to squeeze her, so you really want to make sure you get it in there nice and slow, and gently like it. And if you can keep an eye on her. Just so that you don't squeeze her, that'd be good. She's right in the middle of most of this frame. Okay, good. Now pull her back tight. There, and pull that other frame. And don't, I wouldn't put that one in. What I would do is slide that I, one over. This one, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, do you see her? She... I don't see her. No. Okay. As long as she's not on the sides, then, and just There's gently kind of, of yeah, okay. gently move it in. That's it. And now put that frame in. There you go. Okay, cool. So, um, if, oh, with the, oh no, we wanted some of that pollen stuff yeah. again, didn't we? Yeah. Oh yeah, give them a shake there. So what you, the best way to do it, some of these are dead because they fight sometimes and get upset with each other. So you want to kind of, Sometimes you'll have the lid and there'll be all kinds of bees on it. So you just kind of tap it like that. And then they all fall into one area. And then you can gently just kind of flip them over and they fall in. Okay? And the rest of those are dead? Or? Well, no, there's still a few crawling around. So we'll just shake them out. You can do it. Give them another little push. How's that? I try to put them down in the corner because then you can kind of tip it easy into the box. Oh, it's quite a few bit here. There's gaps in the box and stuff inside. And they get in there. 
poor feet not getting bitten? No. Oh, there's other gloves here. I didn't know that. Yeah, you can wear these to keep your fingers from getting bitten. Did you get them all? I think so. Good soap. There's probably two sizes of these, one for mom, one for me. I don't even know if my hands will fit. I think I got the smaller ones here. I think you got the big ones. Okay. Okay. There you go. So the shape, it doesn't matter. There's paper on it? There's paper both sides. I sometimes put it in the fridge, and then it, it chills it, kind of, and then you can cut through it nicely, and, okay. it, and you can peel the paper off. So we should be buying some of that. So don't you peel well, this paper off or not? Uh, I, it, the problem now is, is that it's kind of warm, and when you go to peel it off, then you're pulling on it, and you get big uh, chunks of the stuff. So I just let them clean it up. What you'll see happening is they'll start throwing the uh, paper out the front door. Oh, they'll drag it out in the room. Oh, yeah. They keep things pretty clean. Maybe Where do you get it? Uh, you can get it from uh, Dwayne. Yeah. There. Okay, so you have your feeders. If, if you decide you want to put a little feed on them, um, uh, that particular style of feeder goes right on the, on the frames. So you lift this up, put that feeder on top, and then, yeah. You lift that off so that the bees hey, you've got control of the bees taking it or not and then then you place it on and then you fill it with syrup sometimes you might want to put a little water and just check to make sure that it's not all water like i did if it's not sealed up usually seal it up with wood uh wood glue okay and then um then it, it provides a well you don't put a dish of it in here you just pour it in there yeah yeah, but all you could put and in the bees can come up here and drink oh i guess not because they have to be able to eat through these holes that's yeah. the idea right yeah. So they go down over the side, and then that, that fills, like, it fills inside. Yeah. And then they can pick it off there. Yeah, makes sense. Well, it, yeah, I see some glue there, so it's probably glued all there. Yeah. What, what happens is, uh, though, when you're feeding like this, too, sometimes is they fight, and they fall into the syrup, and they drown, so it makes kind of a mess. So you just want to be able to keep it clean, and that helps. Yeah. Sometimes you can leave that off. Oh, we're not going to put that on right now, though, right? No, we don't have syrup with us, so uh, we won't do that. The other thing you can do is put floaters in there. What I did is I cut a sheet of plywood, a quarter inch, and cut the hole for that hole, and then put a little bit extra wood underneath, and then it floated on the syrup. Then they can come out on the top, and I cut holes in the plywood, and then they can get a drink that way. And it worked really well. Okay. Yeah, the other one's plastic one. I don't have those, so I'm not familiar with just how they work. I think the same Probably principle. Same principle. principle. Yeah. yeah. You don't have trouble with these getting knocked over or anything like that. So everything's fine until the bear comes. I don't think I've ever seen one here yet. Oh, they're here. Yeah, I got one. <laughs> you got one <laughs> he, bugging you there? He comes every three weeks. Check things out. Take a wire around a shock? Electric fence, yeah. So we yeah. might want to do that. We do have goats, and I imagine they'd knock these over too. Oh, I'm sure they would. A cow wandering around, give them a dunk there, you know, rub his head on it or something. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll work I, on fencing this off then. Yeah. I'd put a little electric fence around here. Three strands seems to be fine. Okay. And But you want a low one too to catch those uh, skunks and raccoons. Okay. And uh, then the middle and high for the bear. Okay. Or your livestock as well. Okay. So, uh, generally speaking, you check them every. Uh, I generally check them every 10 to 12 days because it takes the queen 16 days to emerge. Okay. So you're looking for queen cells because you don't want to lose the volume of bees you've got. Because you can generally anticipate about half the hive leaving. So then your production for that year is really cut down. Right. You, like you're not going to produce honey. So, so would you kill them? The swarm cells? No, the bee, uh, the queen bees. Oh, no. Uh, not unless you want to. But they're, at this point, they're they're a little bit too small to be dividing it, right? Oh yeah, you can't divide these. No. So well, if you had other bees and stuff, then you could play with it a little would bit. Would they make a queen right now, or they're smart enough to realize that hey, there's oh, not? Oh yeah, enough. if you pull the queen now, they'll be making a queen. But they, I wouldn't have to worry about them making a second right now. Not, not at the moment, no. Okay. No, but I still watch for it because every once in a while they get it's up to them, eh? <laughs> right. They and then what do you do then? Uh, I remove the queen cell. That's why I check them before 16 days. Okay. Because she'll emerge on the 16th day. Okay. And if she emerges, then uh, she'll kill all the other queen cells that are in there. And she and the mother, if the mother's still there, may even stay together for a little bit. But usually mom's gone after they've been capped at some point. Okay. Before she emerges. You can tell the difference between a queen cell and a... 
Yeah, it's, you know the peanuts that come in the shell? Yeah, it's just like you stuck one of those in upside down. Oh. Or sideways, lengthways. A lot bigger. Yeah, oh yeah, it's big. But, so let's say they do something funny and they decide to make one tomorrow. Yep. And in 10 days, or 16 days, she comes out and hatches. Yep. And this little beehive starts to split, that would be bad. Well, it would be, yeah. So yeah. in 10 days, if I see that happening, you kill it? I, I would scrape that queen cell egg. Just toss it? Just toss it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Some people like to, uh, they try for the royal jelly to taste the jelly and stuff like that. But it's up to you. Okay. Yeah. But I would remove it at this stage. Now, they can also decide, that, like after moving and everything, that ooh, we're not happy with the queen. We're going to change her. And so they then start to pull out what are called supersedure cells. So swarm cells are generally on the bottom of the frames, and supersedure cells you'll find up in the frame where they've taken an egg and pulled it out. Okay. So they do that as an emergency usually, or there's something wrong with the queen, or they're changing things. So you just even though she's the queen, she's not really the boss. No, I her, think there's a committee. Her life is in the committee's <laughs> hands. The committee's hands. And the the, the other thing that the, we're always checking for eggs. As long as you see an egg in the in the hive, they can regenerate a queen. But if there's no eggs, then they can't regenerate a queen, and that's when the worker thing starts to lay. So if the worker's laying, you can tell because her abdomen isn't as big, she can't lay the egg at the bottom of the cell. It'll be stuck to her sides, okay. and it'll be full of eggs sometimes, like just packed, because she doesn't know to move on and lay it somewhere else. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and that won't work out very good then. No. Is there any more more room than one? Yeah, yeah. yeah there's and also two. Uh, they'll they won't be fertilized. So now you're into a drone situation. In order to reverse that, it's really difficult. You pretty much lost the hive. Hmm. Yeah. So you're always looking for queen. If you we call it queen right. If you don't see the queen, but you see eggs and you see larva and pupa, then everything's good. Okay. She's either there or they can make a new one. But if there's no eggs, then things are serious and you can get caught where they have swarmed you didn't notice it and uh, when you look into the hive there's no eggs uh, but the hive seems calm and everything's okay it's very possible they've raised a queen and she's out on a mating flight and hasn't uh, got back yet or she's still so small that you unless you're used to looking for them that you might not notice her does that make sense yep I think so. I'm not used to it at all, so I probably won't notice, but we'll try yeah. our best. Yeah. How many years have you been doing this? Um, I started in 96. Long time. Yeah. Because yeah, this all sounds a lot uh, like, oh man, I don't know, we're getting into something here. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll probably figure it out. We figure okay. everything else out. That's, so. good. That's good. Well, you call me if you, and maybe I'll check with you in 10 days or so. Um, they should be flying tomorrow without any difficulty. You'll see them coming and going. Maybe I'll come and give you a call a little bit earlier, and, or you guys can do it. You can reverse that, that opening. If it looks like they're building and there's a lot of activity and they're congested at the entrance, yep. uh, maybe we'll flip that over a little bit. Because they, they have the wide hole. There's the wide hole. And yep. what you can do, see how this hole is really small? Yep. So when you flip it over, you get the wide holes like about that wide. Yep. If you think it's too big, just put a block of wood in here and adjust it to an inch or something. Oh, I see. So it's and good. Yep. Just change it and, and let it give them a little more space. Right. Because if they can't get in and out efficiently, then they're not bringing enough food or nothing in. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a problem. And this is a pretty small hole. So. Okay. But it, it's better to start off those the small, I think. Um, I'm just debating. Like we, I sometimes put that top hole in the top, and then but they go there to fly. I I, I think we'll leave them just like that. We'll check maybe, maybe in five, six days. I'll give you a call and make sure we'll, we'll, we'll come and have a look. How's how, how many bees could they hatch in, in 10 days? Uh, they can't hatch any. It's just 24, 24 days for a drone, 21 days for a worker. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's why it's, it, it's important that they build up fairly fast, but it takes a bit of time to get them all. And they regulate that too from the standpoint they know how much they have in reserves. They know how many bees they've got to manage the bees that need to be taken care of and get them capped. And they also know they require a certain amount of heat to generate the heat to keep them alive. Eh? <laughs> Wicked smart, eh? Like oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, I don't know if you believe in God or not, but stuff like this always, I, anybody that believes in evolution, how can something like this just happen? I, I, there has to be a divine creator. Like, I, I kind of think so. <laughs> hey? I kind of think so too. Okay, I, think so I don't know where, you, I didn't know where your stance was, but yeah, yeah, all of no, the, the first I, time I learned about maple syrup, and I, that tree just figured that out, I, no, it yeah. doesn't just happen on its own. <laughs>
It'll be warm on the side. Is that the pumper on the back of that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we have one, don't yeah, we? we one. Okay. So, uh, did you get fuel for it, or are you just going to use your own fuel? I have no idea. Okay. So, there's there's fuel you can buy. For a start, it's not a bad idea, because it keeps it going. Okay. And also, too, it, it's not... Like a fuel, like a gas, like a liquid? No, it's fuel like or a... cotton ball. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, it works pretty good. And I use egg cartons, too. I pack the, the cotton in the egg carton. Okay. And then that seems to give it some substance, and it seems to stand up a little bit longer. Uh, a lot of people want to really jam the smoker full of fuel. You don't need to do that. Uh, you're better to be fueling kind of periodically because if you jam it, there's no airflow and then you don't get the smoke coming out of your needle. Okay. So and any smoke will make them peaceful? Yeah, pretty much. So yeah. if you squeeze that smoke... That's, That's the idea, yeah. yeah. So give her a couple of puffs. I think she's going to out. Yeah. Yeah. With your two hives, like a... a you know, like a uh, snowball sized ball, you should be able to go through both of them without any problem. Check them all. And you, you yeah. do that every time you check them, you smoke them? Generally smoke them. It, what happens when you smoke is that they load up on honey because they think they might be leaving. Okay. So that makes them a little lethargic. So that makes them a little easier to work with sometimes. Okay. But uh, I, I work away with them some days and don't seem to need much honey. Or, sorry, uh, smoke. But other times you hit a hive that needs it and you got to use the smoke. They get peeking up over the bar and kind of looking at you, then you can start to see them coming up. And when they start poking and you feel them hitting you, that's a sign that they're agitated. Okay, that's not a happy bee. Not a happy bee. You can work with them, it's just that they're not happy. That's right, the whole attitude has changed. Yeah. yeah. Very interesting. Okay. So we got to bring this stuff back in. There you go. This. Is this ours? Or yeah, you that's yours. You okay, that. so how yeah. soon should we put more? I guess we'll just keep an eye on that and then... Yeah, uh, one of the things with these is you don't want to disturb them a lot. Okay. So maybe if I, if I say five, six days, I'll give you a call and if you're available, we'll come give them a quick check okay. and we'll give them another step. Give them some more then. Okay, so we'll keep it cool until then? Yeah. Okay, back in the house, the bugs are getting pretty bad there. So that was a pretty cool experience. Uh, never been that close to that many bees before, I don't think. So a uh, very informative guy that we bought them from. And uh, he's going to kind of walk us through it in the next few days as well. And uh, yeah, always open for more questions. So pretty cool learning. Hopefully there's lots of good footage there for you to see. And uh, you can come along as we add another animal to this farm. Uh, come along for that journey as well. So we'll catch you all in the next one.